Back in August, I had my very first project with a travel intern, which was boot camp in southern Vietnam, specifically in the town of Mune. That trip has been very memorable to me, not because it was my first project with them, but because that trip was very challenging. Most of the things that could go wrong did actually go wrong. Nevertheless, I still enjoyed the trip. I was able to learn a lot and share fun moments with the whole travel intern team. Obviously, special shout out to Team Mune, to my boss Poats, to our writer Jeannie, and obviously to my fellow intern Yancy. You made the trip very memorable. Alright, enough of this intro, let's begin this story. For me, the challenge already started right here in the Philippines, but I'll leave that story for another video. The journey started in Ho Chi Minh. It was just a short morning flight from Manila. From the airport, we ride a car to our bus pickup point. We are actually riding a sleeper bus and that was my first time to see and ride a sleeper bus. It's just very small bunk beds placed inside a bus. The ride was supposed to be very comfortable because you could actually stretch your legs and be in a sleeping position. But unfortunately for me, I was carrying a big camera bag. It was quite uncomfortable having a heavy bag placed on top of you for 5 hours. Though, I did actually enjoy the story and conversation I had with our team during that 5-hour long bus drive. As soon as we reached our accommodation, it quickly rained and the rain poured really hard. So instead of going out and shooting, we were forced to stay in the resort. Once the rain stopped, we quickly grabbed a taxi and went on looking for motorbikes to rent. Okay, this part was really memorable for me because our driver kept on insisting on getting us to a shady rental even though we're pointing on a different rental shop. So we're looking for like a place to rent a motorbike then uh, we, we kind of pointed out something on the mo on Google Maps but the taxi driver decided to send us to a random shop and uh, let's see how it goes. So we're now heading to the correct place. Uh, most probably this should be okay. Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. It took us a while to find a rental shop that offers fair price and once we got our bikes, it's kinda late and the motorbikes that we had had barely any gas left. Just enough for you to reach a gas station. Unfortunately for me and Yancy, we're not able to make it to the gas station. We're losing gas. We're losing gas. We're losing gas. Hendrik! Okay, current situation, we lost gas. Okay, so yeah. And we I'd lost like the boss. as much as I can, but um, yeah, we lost Gas. And Hendrix already way ahead of us, and I guess they didn't notice. But um, hopefully they could grab some gas. I'm gonna call them. <laughs> Here's our savior. Come on, guys! No petrol already. <laughs> <laughs> our boss was able to bring us some gas, just enough for us to reach a gas station. Then we had our team dinner. The food that we had was really good. My favorite dish from that meal was the spring rolls. Then the next day, we woke up early. Our call time that day was 4.30 a.m. and I woke up a little bit late. It's uh, 4.20 a.m. and this guy's late! Okay oh. guys, still packing. Hey you. This guy just did his hair. We got to the front desk of our resort and supposed to be our Jeep tour driver was waiting for us there but he was nowhere to be found. We talked to the front desk of our resort to contact our tour driver. At first, they said there was a different person that our tour driver picked up. So the driver apparently picked up someone else. Uh, he seems to be coming back to pick us up. Okay, current situation, we're waiting for our Jeep tour. But unfortunately, it's not yet here. It's currently 4.14 in the morning right now. So it's supposed to be here 4.13 in the morning. What are your thoughts, Trini? I'm so angry. <laughs> I woke up early to get my makeup done and he's not here! We're supposed to be the ones who are late because we wake up late but apparently what's happening right now is our driver is the one who's late. But in the end, our tour driver didn't actually show up. At the time, morale was really low, energy was really low. Obviously, we're frustrated because that should be the highlight of our trip but nobody actually complained. We just rescheduled it the next day and then we just proceeded on going to the Red Sand Dunes. Red Sand Dunes is like a 15 to 20 minutes motorbike ride from our resort. We tried to chase a sunrise and we got some cool shots. Red Sand Dunes isn't that massive in terms of land area. You could also try sandboarding there. 
probably two out of ten tries you could have a great ride but most of the time you just get stuck halfway through your ride we visited the fairy stream some parts of it are very pleasant to walk it's refreshing just walking around nature but there are parts of it where it really hurts to walk through because there are stones across the stream so i recommend just wearing footwear that is fine getting wet there's a small waterfall at the end which is kind of cute halfway across their surfing session it rained then we had dinner I was actually nervous at night because I haven't had any banger shot till that day. Luckily for us, our last day has gone way smoother compared to the past days that we had. Our Jeep tour driver came on time, 4.30am to be exact, and we drive to the white sand dunes to catch the sunrise. We arrived there 5 a.m. and then we picked a good spot to catch the sunrise. It's currently 5 a.m. right now and we're ready on the white sand dunes. We're just waiting for the sunrise. Hopefully, it's epic. The view of the sunrise at the peak of the sand dunes is magical. We briefly pass by a fishing village to see how the locals make their living. Then we drive 30 to 45 minutes to check the princess castle. Again, it's cute. How I wish we had more time to spend in the resort because it's really nice. But our schedule was so packed, we're just there when it's time to sleep. Upon checking out the resort, we drive straight back to Ho Chi Minh for our chong party where we have to edit and try to finish the video that we shoot that week. Basically, you have to pull an all-nighter and try to make an edit as tight as possible and present your video to the team the next day at 10 a.m. I did actually sleep. I think I had one to two hours of sleep that day because I reached that point where I'm still awake but I couldn't even function. All of us actually are able to present that morning which is a good thing. Then we ended that day with a batting party and a karaoke. What I like most about the trip is that everybody's competitive in a good way and everybody wants to improve. That's something that I have observed from the batting party because most of us, it's our first time trying that. At first, our hit rate was very low but that doesn't discourage us from playing or trying and as we play more, our hit rate gets higher. I, for example, only hit one baseball during my first try but for my second try, I think I was able to hit more than 10 and it's a result from observing others how they successfully hit the baseball. So that's it for my Vietnam vlog. I really had a memorable trip. If you wanted to see more of what we did in Vietnam, go check out the Travel Intern social pages from Facebook, YouTube, IG, TikTok. I guess that's just it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye!